Hey folks, uh, welcome back. I've got it about ready to put the interior back in it. Um, carpet and all that. So all the rust repairs that I'm gonna take care of at this point is done. Uh, right now, I noticed when I drive it, the back of it would shake around a little bit, rattle real bad when you hit bumps and stuff. And what I found out was it's got a track bar back there, which is this guy here and the bushings were shot that hold that track bar, which is what holds the car straight uh, side to side when you're driving it. Um, this, the bushing, this is one of the bushings out of it. It's pretty tired. Um, it was real sloppy. Um, like I said, this thing would, this actually, when you'd hit a bump, this thing would go side to side like that probably about a quarter of an inch slap around it makes a lot of movement on the car on the road so then a lot of searching they probably make one that'll somebody makes one that'll fit this car but it's not on any website I found um, and I, I don't want to just go buying bushings for you know for other cars that look similar uh, I, I couldn't pull up any measurements on them, so I couldn't tell. Uh, so I had a little piece of neoprene here. So I decided to try to make some. Uh, this is where I started on the second one. I already made the first one. But I figured it might be something you guys like to see because you can turn rubber on a lathe, which is what this is. It's a little tougher than like tire rubber. But um, machinability is a little better. Still, it's tricky, but you can do it. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did it. I'm gonna make the second one. Ready to rock and roll. So here's the first one. I already put the sleeve in it. And you know, it ain't perfect, but it's, it'll work. This, you see this side's got a little chamfer on it that um you know that's the that's the side that'll go in first you'll grease that up stick it in a press pop it in um see there's a little seam right there that's where i turned the first side down i measured it got it the outside diameter that i wanted i got a little bit carried away on the other side before i realized it and i went a little bit deeper it's not going to hurt anything but uh these are already gonna be better ones than what the factory ones had because these are these are a little stiffer. This is kind of like what you see, those those high performance bushings you buy. That's what they're made out of. Um, so, all right. Well, I'm going to, what I'm gonna do, put a little bit of oil on this sleeve, press it up in here. First, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark where the end of it is with my paint pen and chuck this up in the, in the lathe. I got blue mark there. And right in the center of that mark is where the end of this is. So I'll put a little bit of oil on that. Give it a little slick them and uh, there we go. 
I drilled all the way through. Just go ahead and drill both of them at the same time. And now we'll turn it. That's where the end of that is. I'll bring my tool bit in here and I'll show you the tool bit that I use for this. Just a regular high speed steel half inch tool bit. And lose, use a lot of RPM. I'm turning this at uh, 1230 RPMs. Uh, and I just took this half inch tool bit over to the grinder and just ground the end of it. Just pushed it up against it with the, with the angle on it. Pushed it up in there and just brought it in, plunged it in until it was a good sharp edge on it. Um, pretty sharp already, but I like sharpening a little bit more, especially cutting something like this. So, all right. Chuck this up in here. And what I'll do, I'll bring my live center in. Put in that sleeve, lock my tailstock down, bring my tool bit in, or take this down just a hair. Try and put that edge of that right in the center of that blue mark. There we go. I'm gonna, can't really crank down on this because it's rubber. But that's why I have the tail stop here. So give it a good turn, get it locked in there decent. And then what we'll do, um, come out here and mark my 250. center of that mark is where is where I'll be for my other flange here. Come on over. And that puts us right about right. And that's gonna leave us about because this this width of this track bar boss right here is one inch and fifty. So I'm gonna make this, this right here is one inch and 50, right? So the tool bit's half, tool bit's half inch. I come over an inch, it leaves about 50 thousandths ring in the middle that I have to go in and cut back and cut out of it. So, <clears throat> all right, fire this up. I'm going to bring my tail stock in, and my live center starts turning. Lock it down, where it can't move. Start bringing this in. You can see that. That's cutting off there pretty nice. you got to cut it slow. Give the tool bit time to cut. You get a little bit of a centrifugal swing out, sling out of that rubber as well. And I want that inside diameter to be one inch, 130. The bore is about one inch, 125. It's got a little bit of wear on it. Plus I want it to be a little bit tight in there when I press it in so it squeezes on that sleeve and keeps that sleeve good and tight For a second. I'm at 200 thousandths in. 
let's measure it. And we're one inch, 130. One inch, 165. Don't need to take 35 thousandths out of there still. Come back to my 200. Right there. There's 10. 20. 30. One inch, one thirty one. I'm going to call that good. <clears throat> like I said, this is rubber. It's not like it's got to be 100% precise. We'll just cut this out. A little pressure on it. There we go. All right. Now, you want to take this flange down to one inch, 380. That'll give us 120. So this diamond, this is an inch 530. So we want to take this down to where we got a 125 flange around it. Right now it's too big. So you take this outside diameter down to one inch 380. Should be right. That makes the outside one inch 250. Or one inch. Yeah, one inch 380. They'll give us 250 difference or 125 per side. Let's see what we got here. One inch 455. Well, that's 75,000, so we got to take off yet. Touch off. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. Seventy. Five. There and bark out. It ain't sparking out, it's barking out. It's, it's rubber and you bark your tires. So we'll just call it barking out. How about that? We're at 205 thousandths on my compound, or on my uh, Y axis. One inch 386, I'm gonna call that good. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and put my lead in on that with my file so it's easier to press in. You notice this file has a rounded handle on it. You never want to use a file that has the spike end on it without a handle on it because I have, I know, I've known people who have been using a file on the lathe and it ran that all the way up in their arm. This right here is quite a bit safer having the round handle on it, but it's even safer than that to have one with a big wooden handle on it. You gotta be real careful. This thing's turning 1200 RPMs, it will hurt you. What I wanna do is I wanna take this lead in chamfer down to where the leading edge of it is at or below that one inch and 30 thousandths diameter so that it'll push in that hole in my press.
go. Take a little bit more of that sharp corner off. Top of it. Roll it up on there. Roll it on in. There we go. That looks quite nice. Okay, now all we gotta do is park this off. Unlock our tail stop, back it out. Unlock our spindle, back it out. There's our mark. Bring this in. I want this in as close as I can get it because I want to have as much of that back in the chuck as possible. You can get that real close. So there, you just snug it up and then bring this in. Lock our tail stock down. Tighten your spindle up a little bit. Tie up our lathe. Lock down our spindle clamp. All right. Now I guess the first thing I ought to do is take this outside diameter down. But I want to take this down a ways so that I've got that marked so I don't lose my mark. Take it down to that 205 mark that I had on there before. And this is messy. Look at this. Stuff gets all over you. One eighty, two hundred, two hundred five. Let's go on to two ten, two twenty. No way we're below it. All right now, let's take that down. Two hundred, two oh five. Let's measure that. See where we're at. One inch, four fourteen, four twelve. We got 32 thousandths yet to take off of that. Got a little lip there. I think I'm gonna park this off on my bandsaw just because it's rubber and I don't want it to sling all over the place. Alright. Back tail stock up. Get our 
piece out. All we gotta do is part that off on the bandsaw and press them in. sleeve in it. crack bar bushings so don't get discouraged if you can't find them on the internet or find them in a store you can make stuff yourself let's go put this on grease because if you don't your threads will lock up and you never see it coming there but it is close Pop 
this one back out. Right there, that movement I was just doing is what the, the car does with bad bushings in it. Which is what it was doing. <clears throat> It's not this anymore. That's the end play and the axles in the rear end. That's what that is. They got little clips in here. Probably, I would say there's C-clips on the ends of these axles to hold them in. Yeah, there's probably a little bit of wear in them. A little bit of side to side. That's not bad enough for me to worry about as far as driving a car. My main issue was that track bar. That thing was really bad, loose. 
And uh, have I ever told you about the funny sounds old fat guys make when they bend over? So anyway, that'll conclude this uh, this episode today on making your own track bar bushings. Rock on.